Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back along. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of A Dairyman's Diary. It's just gone 7 30 a.m. I had grand plans today to get some more grass knocked down for a bit of third cut silage. We're also going to start some drilling uh, because we need to get some winter barley into the ground. Uh, and it's raining. It's been raining most of the night, and it looks like it's going to continue raining for another little while yet. So, all of that plan, uh, planned work for today, has gone out the window. We got a few other things that we can do. Right now, we're just hiding under a shed because that seems like the, the best thing to do. Uh, but no, we've got things to do. That you'll see the John Deere. Oh, as we run over here, John Deere has been set up and ready to go. We just haven't moved that yet. We can't really, truth be told. But we're going to run back over to the other side. We're going to jump into the new John Deere. Into the uh, open sesame. There we go. Get inside. Into the 6110. Uh, and because we're just gonna feed everything up here this morning We also need to clean out the cattle here as well, but we're gonna go for a bit of a road trip actually want to get these guys fed up Oh, I'm too big. I can't get through that. We have to go around and about that. There we go Perfect, so we need to get into this we're gonna start this up uh, Look at that on the uh, on the feeder wagon. It looks incredible We're just gonna let this uh, fire on up here. That's wonderful. Let's look at the bevis just like that. Perfect stuff. So yeah, we need to get everything cleaned out inside the shed here. Uh, that muck needs to be moved as well. But we're going to just feed everything up in here first. Uh, and then we're going to take it on up the hill to farm two. John Deere 77 tennis parked up there as well. So we'll get everything fed up at farm two. And then we'll bring this back down. Uh, we'll bring the 77 10, sorry, down. Uh, and we're going to go for a little bit of a road trip to pick up some fodder beet from a local uh, neighbor. It's not too far away. We actually bought about 100 ton off of him. So we need to get that moved and then we can bring that back uh we're gonna start tips back here we'll bring a load here for tomorrow's feed so we start to incorporate that uh and then we'll get some muck shifted as well just a bit of everything today really so we'll see how that goes uh so first things first though we just uh, let this warm through for a little bit and then we're gonna um crack on the pto there this is a beautiful track to do it in there my two ptos are this track has it actually has a front uh pto which is incredible we just clocked that one on here. I uh, love the controls for this. Everything's so ergonomic and easy to reach. Electronic spool valves as well is a huge plus. That's really nice. Uh, so now that's firing away there, we're just going to uh, turn on the mix and shoot that. As you can see, we are going along there just nicely. Now, this actually all needs to be cleared out as well because it's a bit messy in here. So we have to come on in with the uh, with the, the JCB just to give it all a bit of a tidy up. Uh, let's see the cattle have, I kind of scraped all that muck up to the front end just last night just to be easier and yet they still climb all over it so what can you do some people you just can't help okay all right and so we're just emptying out there pretty nicely indeed actually we're just gonna move along a bit more on the about three turn left. Okay, and we'll knock that off there. So that's all good and done. Now, what I'd like to do is just actually beat out this way. Just trying to uh, not disturb the cattle too much with the feeder wagon. So we'll go out this way and around the yard. There we go. Yeah, I really like this track though, very much like it. A lot of you seem to like it as well, judging by the comments. So thank you each and every one of you who did respond on that. It's very, very nice to have you all uh, giving your input there. But what is a beautiful track there? God, that's raining hard. Beautiful rainbow though, look at that. I am looking too bad, is it? A shame that it's uh, an absolute mess of a day. But yeah, like I say, we had all these grand plans today, and well, they're not happening. Uh, so there you go. Now, what we'll do, we'll probably just go and fill this up from the. Um, from what is over at the second yard there, farm two. Uh, so we'll leave that here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna head on over. Just fold that over there like that. Put the beacon on, and then we'll shut that gate. Like I say, lots of uh, lots of road driving to do today, but we're gonna take you along for the ride for the, uh, for the first stage, because one of the main reasons that we wanted to upgrade the tractor, or I wanted to upgrade the tractor was that the the drive over with the um with the old massive there the 3090 wouldn't have been great so we're going to take this over instead and just power up the hill there 
That should be nice. And what is a beautiful, beautiful morning. A really nice day. You'll see this grass, if it's good for one thing, it's the fact that this, uh, this grass is going to be starting to grow along in this rain a bit more, which is nice. Well, I think we're going to cart the muck into there, actually. That field's going to be uh, worked over in the summer. Uh, we'll just get it out of the yard there for now. And then we're all good to go. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we've got a lot of different driving around there to do today, which would be pretty good. Okay, this is always an absolute pain. We need to get that work done. Okay. And up the hill we go. The 3090 is going to be living predominantly on the bale chopper at the moment there. Uh, so it's going to be a nice little tractor to have on there. Be um, just still trying to figure out the best way of, it, of having, you know, where to store this John Deere. And, I think it's going to vary each day actually. One day we'll start feeding up at the top of the hill uh, and the other day we'll start feeding down farm one there so I think it'll all change around but we'll see. But anyway this uh, this tractor's surging up the hill a little better that's for sure. I'm not making quite as much of a grunt about it so you're not more comfortable. That is for sure. Uh, there's uh, interestingly I mean not that I would ever move away from a John Deere but I see Massey Ferguson are about to announce a new uh, kind of competitive to this, I guess. So it'll be interesting to see how that one looks, but uh, not interesting enough to sway me away from green, that's for sure. Uh, okay. And we're not going to make that turn, that's an awfully tight turn in this uh, rig, which can go straight on up the hill. And uh, we will get ourselves into farm number two. Uh, we need to fill this one up. We'll have to put a couple of bales of silage into there, make some hay in as well, let it get turned over, uh, and then we should be good. But we'll, we'll get that all done. And once they're fed up here, we're laughing. So I'm going to get them all fed up. And then we'll bring you along for the next stage of the ride there, which is going to be us jumping into the 77. So we'll catch you in just a little bit. All right, folks, we are done and dusted. A little bit of mess to clear up there, but we're going to get to that later on this today when we're out in that John Deere again. Uh, right now, though, we need to run over to here. Just grab the key from the secret hiding place there. You'll never know where that is. And jump on it in. Good Lord, is it wet. What a day. All right, we're going to let this one tick over for just a little bit. Let it warm through and then we'll uh, we'll get ourselves away. All right, so we have a big dump trailer on the back here. We're going to go for a bit of a spin. But first thing I'm going to show you, I mentioned it's been raining quite a bit here today. And that is starting to show, let me tell you here. As we come around the corner in the 77 now out the main yard, uh, the river is starting to rise up already, which is a little surprising. I didn't think it would be uh, it rained that much, but clearly it has. It's starting to creak up a little bit there. Uh, you'll notice a few different things. You might be able to see it from here in the traffic cab. They've started to spill just on over to the road there a little bit now, which is uh, alarming. Uh, and it's covered over the top of the, um, the outlet there. So it is coming. It's something we'll have to keep an eye on there. So we'll see. But we're not going that way. Certainly not now, at least there. But yeah, there is the, uh, there is the flooded river. That's going to be interesting to see. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't rain too much more so that's become too much of a problem but anyway off we go uh, now this is a bit of a drive so we're gonna um, hit you up with the GoPro that I've put on the roof and we'll uh, we'll see you on the other side
Okay, and so we we are here. This is all mine. This is all my sugar beet here. I just need to find. Um, what we'll probably look to do is actually just turn around there if we can. Maybe squeeze around here. Apparently, there's a loader around here. Oh, that's a loader. Not bad, is it? Oh. Uh, mm. Right, that was close, Lord. Whatever. Okay, so we'll just sneak over here. Which gives enough space somewhere around here, I think. If we just angle this in properly. Uh, and then we'll see how we get on. So we're just going to get this all loaded up as quickly as we can. We'll give you a bit of a, a discussion about why we're bringing this in. Uh, and what that looks like whilst we're loading up, I think, there. But we'll just want to try and get this all done. So, just come forward a bit here, not try to go into the ground there. Uh, and a bit like this, I think. Wonderful stuff. Okay. Handbrake on there. Let's go and jump into this beast, shall we? There, this is a wrong colour paint for me. This is not green, but it's a W190D. Alright, folks, so we're pretty much done. Uh, I didn't want to talk too much whilst we're filming this because it's not my loader and I wanted to concentrate whilst we're getting it in there, but there is our load of uh, Bodaby all ready to go. We're just going to park you about here. Perfect. Looking good. Still plenty left to go. We're going to have to really get a, a workout to get this all taken care of. But we'll, we'll figure that one out as and when we can. Um, but yeah, let's get our stuff away. So we use Follow Beat for our cattle there. It's a, a great alternative to, uh, to feeding them grain, really. Uh, now, so we haven't fed cattle grain for a long time. But what Follow Beat will do there can work well for both dairy and uh, finishing cattle. With dairy cattle there, it really does increase their production of, uh, of milk. Uh, which is fantastic there. Uh, it has a very high dry amount of percentage, which is uh, higher than most grains actually, which is perfect and ideal for what you need and what you're looking for when you are um, trying to uh, milk cattle. So it works very well on that side of things. Uh, from the uh, finishing beef, uh, it will also kind of really up their, their carb intake as well, so their carbohydrates. So it provides them with a lot of energy and they need energy, especially when it's cold there, to stay there, keep their body temperature the same. Uh, so they don't, what we don't want them to do is to consume uh, their own body muscle or their own stored energy there uh, to keep warm. If they do that then they don't keep their weight, they don't keep their finishing and they lose that and then that could be a big waste of time and effort. Uh, and then you, you don't get any money for them when you come to sell them there. So that's why we kind of we, we bring them in this fodder beat here because it's a good thing to mix into their diet there, and it really does do them a world of good. Uh, and they're able to benefit from it. We're going to take about half of this uh, this uh, pile actually is going to go to farm one and your half to farm two there. So it'll get mixed in across the board uh, and we'll see how it looks there. But that's going to be the plan. We won't get it all done today. We're just going to take this first load over to farm one where it's going to stay there and we'll get after it uh, for this evening I think really. It'll start to get blended into the diet feeder and we'll see how it's all looking. Hopefully get a few more loads moved across there in the course of the next few days. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's why we bring it in here. Uh, that's what we use it for, at least, and what the, where our benefits are for it for, for our farms, uh, perhaps at least. A lot of dairy farms do it for the same same reasons there. Uh, many will actually grow it themselves there, but we just because we just moved over here, we didn't have that option. So I was lucky enough to find about 100 ton that I could pick up. Uh, and yeah, we shall see how that looks. We're just gonna come grinding up through the village here now. What a beautiful sound that is, huh? I think I may have been able to go that way actually, and that could have got me to where I needed to be. But I'm still figuring out this village. I don't want to take a wrong turn and then be stuck uh, down someone's tiny little laneway. So we'll just uh, play it safe here, I think. Uh, yes, because there is the back of my yard. Okay. It's a little bit of a wider track to come in this way, so we'll just carry on over. Uh, we're just going to tip this and then we're going to get onto the JCB and try and get everything oh, there's a puddle there. Uh, try and get everything leveled out and start clearing out some of that muck actually because I really want to get them looking good. Uh, I'd be curious to see how well we travel given how well it's how much it's been raining and uh, my bets are not very well so this might get curtailed pretty quickly as well so we'll have to wait and see but it's all uh, it's trying to find jobs that we can do during the miserable weather here at the moment. We're going to just sneak up here. There you go. So I hope you're all doing very well anyway. Do let me know down below what you're working on, what you're driving as always, and how it's all coming along. Uh, always very curious to know. Uh, and we are, yeah, we're going to 
Let's swing on into the yard here. It doesn't look like it's too bad. It looks like there's a lot of weeds on there that we need to get control of, but it doesn't look too bad from a, uh, a soil condition perspective. Uh, this week we were supposed to be receiving the uh, agronomists who were coming in just to kind of really have a good look over the land, but no, somehow I can't really see that now. It's looking pretty terrible. Okay. So we're going to try and just tip this next to where the 3090 is actually. Uh, we'll see how it looks in there. There's a little bit of a, what I, I can assume was a muck midden for someone. I'm not going to use it for that pivot though. What we are going to do is just try and knock it into there if we can. And this is going to be a bit tight. Yeah, we'll tip a few loads there, not do any harm in the rain. And then we'll, uh, nailed it. Okay, and back we go. So we'll get this one tipped. So we'll, let's get a little bit of a shuffle around the yard here so we can get the JCB out. And then we're going to try and get a bit of muck collided out of here. Uh, past time that I seem to spend an awful lot of my time doing. That's for sure. But let's get you tipped out here. There we go. This is a nice trainer actually for just carting bulk work around there. It's a really handy little one to use. Uh, uh, nice and powerful, nice and large. Pretty rough though, so you can stick a bit of anything into here and it's not going to cause any issues. Uh, but yeah, it's all good. Whilst that's coming down, let's just get this JCV set up and then we'll get there, get some muck shifted. Not right, and so let's get this all scraped clear here. Come on, lady, out of the way. Okay. They are really racking it up in here. We need to get on this pretty quickly just to get ahead of it, really. But it'll all get kind of just stored, stacked up outside there. We'll leave it for all until the spring. Uh, we're going to start to try and work it down across some of the different fields out there, but it'll go to some good use to trying to reclaim the, the land out there and get it into a good state. There we go. Perfect. And we go here. Uh, I'm sure the family are going to love me doing this first thing in the morning, but it uh, needs much to get cracking along here. Too much to do otherwise. A uh, little backup. Okay, and so yeah, what we're going to do is just kind of really keep pushing along with all of this. We've got a lot to do, we'll get this all wrapped up here, uh, and then we'll bring you along for a ride when we can actually get ourselves back into the field and get some more work done. Uh, for now though, uh, it's just going to be a bit of muck work, a bit of yard clearing up, and uh, seeing how it all goes from there. Uh, so for now we'll leave it here. Thank you ever so much for watching. This has been a bit of a short update here from myself, Frank. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't, you've yet to do so. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to Simulation for the Nation, and we will see you all in the next one. Until then, though, folks, have yourself a great day. Enjoy what you're doing as always, and we will see you later. Catch you later.